time to strike! Their final moments approach. A silent death. From the shadows. Yes, they make shurikens this small. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to a new guy video. Today I'll show you guys how to play Kenan top. Ability sequence on this champion is Q max first for the single target damage and poke, W second for another damaging ability that also empowers some of your auto attacks and then E last which is your attack speed buff and mobility. The ultimate is what makes Kenan one of the absolute best team fighters in the game so make sure to put points into this ability whenever possible. Alright guys, so Kenan's passive is Mark of the Storm, so it will make all of your abilities apply this mark and then once you have 3 marks then the target will be stunned. But Kenan, you can start any of those 3 abilities, I like to start with the cooler one here because then you can really poke the opponent a lot because it is a single target damaging ability. It can get body blocked so keep that in mind. Now when you play this champion in the early game against melee matchups, you really want to abuse that auto attack range. You have Doran Sword right here, so your auto attacks hit a lot harder, so you really want to abuse that like I'm doing here. You can reset the minion aggro by constantly walking into the brush. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take W level 2 here, so what it does is that it has a passive part to it that um, will empower every 5th auto attack, making it apply your passive. And then the active part will um, damage anyone nearby who has your passive on them. So now is basically the point where you can really um, apply that passive stun. So a quick trading combo on cannon is that you try to stack that passive up by auto attacking minions. Then you walk within range of the enemy champion, auto attack them, Q and then W and that's a free stun. Now when we have E here, so that is a mobility spell. Um, it will also refund some energy like a passive does and it will also apply a mark of the storm of course. And it gives some attack speed so that is your engage and disengage tool. So right here we're just stacking up a massive minion wave into the tower so now is the point where we can really start harassing this guy. Be careful of the auto attack range of the tower. Um, you can bind the key to cha target champions only and if you do that then you will never accidentally auto attack the tower when the champion is hiding right behind it. So this is a champion that constantly wants to be pushing of course because once you push the wave and show it on the tower that's why you can really start abusing those melee matchups. Because Kennen is a champion that does really well into melee champions like uh, Yasuo, Jax, Darius and so on. So now he has to recall, if he doesn't do that then he's pretty screwed. Okay yes, see so if we can cancel it. Nice. If I had my W then I can flash some uh, plus, uh, press W right there, but it's fine. Now Kenan of course is a lame bully guys, he does not use mana or anything, uh, he constantly regens that energy right there. So, um, it is a champion you want to pick. If you have a lot of AD champions on your team and you also want something that could do well in the laning phase against a lot of matchups and do extremely well in team fights. Because Kenan is one of the best team fighters in the game, so if you're looking for an AP champion in the top lane that can do these things then Kenan is a really good pick. And of course we have a decent back here, so we got the refill potion, very cost efficient, got one amp tome because um, the first core item. 
um, is the product belt. And core item basically means that you'll be getting these items every single game, no matter who you're playing against. And Proto Belt is one of them, Sonny's Hourglass is the other one. Now the thing is, whenever Jax jumps onto you, you want to make sure that you have that E up. Because then you can go for a quick stun combo where you Q him, W, and then E through him so he gets stunned and you get away. And this is basically what makes uh, this matchup really really difficult for Jax because um, he has no way to get close onto you without him getting a perma CC. So now that we have the ultimate up, which is an AoE ability that will constantly proc your passive, deal insane amount of damage to anyone who stands in it, is when we can go for kills. And this is basically also what makes Kinnan so OP in the team fights because um, if you hit the backline with this uh, ultimate then it's a guaranteed win almost. Now he is within kill range, pretty free kill, he should not have jumped in right there. The thing is, the target can get stunned multiple times, but um, if you stun him twice before 6 seconds, then he will still be stunned, but he won't be stunned for long. Of course, you can pop that ultimate whenever, but it's really good to use it at the start. Just so you make sure that you get all that bonus damage off from that ultimate, because it deals a crazy amount of damage. Now when you want to push waves guys, you just eat through all the minions and then you press W and that way you hit all the minions with your passive and then you can use that W to um, damage all of them again. You just have to back off here because we are pretty low HP and we don't want to risk giving away a lead for no reason. Enemy jungler is also coming up so just go ahead and recall here. Right, he is hitting. Back to his own jungle, so now we have the revolver here, so it adds up a lot of burst. You also get some AP, so you always want this. Instead of the Kindle Gem, because there's really no point in getting that as your first item, since it doesn't give you any damage. Now of course you can use that E since it gives you bonus movement speed, um, you can use that uh, to get back to lane faster, since you don't use any mana then you lose pretty much nothing. And this is pretty much how you disengage on this champion, just Q W when they uh, jump onto you and then you press that E on top of them and then they will be stunned. So you have some time to auto attack them and then you can just back off pretty much. Alright, got all the CS, that's pretty good. It looks like he's going for the plant. I don't think they're doing the Herald right now. Yeah, he took the plant, okay. Now we just had to keep poking him. We really want to abuse that landing phase um, because that is what Kenan is really good at. So now he jumped onto us so we know that he doesn't have anything left in his ability kit, so that's a pre pretty free ultimate. There you go, so there's another free kill right there. Pretty easy, so this is of course a favorable matchup for Kennen. Uh, he does really well into those melee champions. I just have to focus on showing this wave in here because there's a massive wave stacking up. We have another wave coming in right now, so we definitely want this uh, wave to crash. And then we can go for the tower plates. Really important that you focus down those tower plates that give a lot of gold. Now 
Okay, now we see set on the map and we also saw iron for like a split second in the mid lane so it is pretty safe for us to push this out as you can see one tower plate gives you 160 gold so when you get two tower plates that's already more gold than you would get from a kill right so that's why it's really really important that you focus down on these plates here so even if you aren't able to get kills in the laning phase you can still um Get a massive lead just by farming well and focusing down the objectives. Okay, rip that cannon. Yeah, I'm probably dead here. I cannot get away from this set. Uh, that's kind of my mistake. Uh, or extending a bit too much, but it does happen. At least we got this ultimate out, so that means that uh, Lucian should be safe in the middle lane. Because a set will ultimate is the only way that he can threaten Lucian, but we have the protobill right now. And uh, that is pretty much the first core item completed, so the reason you buy the Sun Cannon is because um, you need to get closer. For his ultimate, right? He needs a way to get into the fight, so he has to see, and then he has another gap closer with the protobill. It also gives you uh, extra burst. And also much better wave clear because um, if you don't have anything to do in the laning phase and you want to roam then you can stack up the wave and then just use protobill on the wave because that way you will delete it almost instantly. Okay, they got the herald so I need to respect that. They might be looking to gank top so it's really important that I don't die here. Okay, we do see Ivan in the mid lane. If I die top lane, then they're just gonna use the Herald, and then I lose all the plates. Jax is bottom lane, this is not worth it to teleport in, because Jin is dead already, so I'm just gonna save it. And then we need to focus on pushing this way fast. Eat through all the minions here. Now we have another huge way crashing into his tower, so we're gonna get another plate. Okay, the Herald is coming down mid, that is fine by me. I do have the teleport up in case they go for a dive. Um, they can actually easily do that with Ivan and Set, but just keeping an eye on the minimap. So we did see Ivan go towards the Scuttle that's about to spawn soon, so we don't need to worry about that. So now we have. All the plates before they expired, so that's pretty huge. So now we have an insane advantage compared to Jax. Because Jax is like one of the hardest scaling champions in the sideline, right? So Kenan wins this in the early to mid game, but if Jax finishes his items, then he is going to outscale us really hard. To the point where we cannot. Um, do anything to him in the side lanes, but we will still have a much, much better team fight. So whenever he jumps in, that's when it is pretty free to use that ultimate. And now he goes down, so we will have another objective. More free gold for us to snowball the game here. We can go ahead and push down this tower here. I'm just gonna let some of the minions die. There we go, the tower was a bit too low HP, else I would normally let it kill all those minions right here, and then I would have taken down the tower. Remember, you can always use your protobill active on the minion way if you need to push really fast. You want to reset immediately, but we have a lot of gold, so we also need to reset here. Okay, there's a set coming in. Just to make it in time. Oh, Ivan is coming too. Okay. That's really good. We decided to reset here and not work all the walk all the way up. Now we're gonna build towards our second core item. So first of all they have a lot of AD on the team, so Sika Sangar is a really good purchase, and then we also need the uh, CD item. We're just waiting for that. That's at 900 gold. Need five more gold and then we can go back to the lane. So 
but this is pretty much the mid game uh, when the first tower goes down what you want to do in the mid game you can split push in the sideline but Kenan is one of the best team fighters so you want to be with that team if possible mid lane okay he's dead now of course you also want to go to the sidelines but you don't want to afk in the sideline uh, like a split pusher like a jackson turn the mare they want to afk in the sideline that's not something you do we take another free kill here so basically we just push out the sideways and then we groove with our team whenever possible and then we look for fights Cannon is really really strong in the early to mid game he has a lot of damage and people typically don't have MR at this stage because we are the only AP right so if they buy MR then all our other AD sources will deal a lot of damage to them We can go ahead and walk into the enemy jungle, scout for wards, and then we can also take out the tower in the mid lane, it's pretty low HP. I don't think Seth has his ultimate up, there we go. As you can see at this point we don't really need our ultimate to kill people, cause we have a lot of burst on this champion. Alright, ultimate down on Alistar as well. Okay, I'm dead here, there's no way I'm making it out, but uh... It's fine, so they also got the tower in the mid lane, so actually pretty fine, even though they got a uh, shot down on me. As long as we are getting the objectives, then it's alright. So now we can go ahead and build the second core item, which is Sonya's Hourglass. Okay, the teammates pushing down top lane. They should be careful though, there's a lot of people coming up. Israel is in the bottom side, so they should just back off. So now we have the Sonya's Hourglass, that is the second core item on Kennen. You don't have to buy this as a second item, but you always get this in every single game. The reason you want this item is because Kennen with his ultimate wants to be in the middle of the fight, right? Because you want to be able to hit everyone with that ultimate. And since you are in the middle of the fight, then people can target you. So Sonya's Hourglass works as an extra safety net for you. You can dive in the fights, pop your ultimate and then pop that Sonya's Hourglass so nobody can target or damage you. That buys yourself some time so your teammates can catch up and then your ultimate can pretty much finish off everyone. Okay, so Alistair actually pretty decent champion into cannon. Anyone with CC that can kind of push you away from the fights can do well, really well into him. So a uh, Poppy, a Lee Sin who can kick cannon away while he pops that ultimate. They're pretty good picks into this champion, not as slain counters, but in general. Just gonna stay grouped with the team here, so they're pushing down uh, bottom side, I'm gonna push mid here. And then the dragon is spawning as well, so focus down the objectives, that's really important, that's how you win the games. You can also steal away the jungle camp, so you set the enemy jungler further behind. Alright, so I got the drag right here, so now you just need to push in this wave here. I am pretty low HP, but I do have the Sonya's Hourglass, so they cannot dive me. I have a lot of gold here, but I want a bit more gold, because then I can get the Light Rod and build towards the Rabbit on Stealth Cap. Because if you can get that item... Um, before the fight start, then you'll be huge and you just one shot every squishy on the team with one ultimate. So of course on cannon guys you always want to flank like I'm doing here. Um, Alistar did knock me away but that's basically how you approach the fights. You want to flank, get past the front line and find the carries. If you land ultimate on the carries then you just win. That's pretty much a guaranteed win, you cannot lose it. So always look for that flank whenever possible. I'm gonna go ahead and bot, then I can farm that wave and I can recall and get that large rod, uh, which sits at 1250 gold, so we still don't have enough for it. Only should take that skull crap. 
He's a bit um, behind in gold, or CS compared to Ivan, but we have the objectives, so it's fine. We can dive this guy, is totally fine. Now we don't care even if he jumps on us without us having the ultimate. Even if we didn't have it, then we had the Sonic's Hourglass, so... We don't need to waste the ult here, it's totally fine. So Jax is down, another free kill for our team, and we can just keep pushing, get XP for ourselves. So now we have enough of the light rod. Oops, that was a pretty uh, troll. Portable Axelra, right there, it didn't hit quietly. So now we have enough of the light rod. Really start building towards that uh, Rapid and Stealth Cap here. Um, you can build towards this item if they don't uh, buy MR items at this point. As you can see, nobody on the enemy team has it, so. Rapid and Stealth Cap is the absolute best purchase right here, but if they have MR, then you can also go for the voice stuff. But only go for the Void Staff if the carries are buying MR. You don't care about the tanks because you won't really be focusing down the tanks anyway. That's for your AD carries to deal with. You want to get into the backline and pretty much one shot them. So only go for MR if the carries are buying it. Pretty free fight because I have the Sonya Sauglas so they cannot dive me. And there we go. It's really good ultimate as well. This is basically what Kenan can do. Also what makes him... Such an insane champion when you group up with a team and go for those team fights. Right, Baron, I'm pretty free right here. Got it just before 22 minutes, so that's pretty early on in the game, but because they tried to dive me, then we got this lead, so it's fine. I just want these waves to crash into the tower with those empowered minions so they can take down the objectives faster by themselves. They're also a lot more tanky, so more difficult to um, take out for the enemies. If I had the ultimate right here, I would just have went in and dive them both. Because uh, I have the Sonic Sourglass, so I don't need to worry about anything. The thing is though, if you don't kill Caitlyn, then she's going to mess you up in the Sonic Sourglass because she can just put traps on top of you and then when you Come back from stasis, then you'll be CC'd, and then they can just kill you. Alright, let's get that second light shot, so we almost have enough for the Rabbit and Stealth Cap. That is the biggest power spike you'll be getting on this champion and any other AP champion. You can go ahead and dive here, so got the flash shot, she cannot make it out, and she is dead. Yeah, so we can just probably push for the end here, let's see. Okay, interesting ult by Leona. We have a buffed up minion wave here, so... We should be able to go for the end. The dragon is also spawning. Okay, our minion wave is gone pretty much. Nice, good engage by Leona. That is coming up, we need to focus him down. Okay, Estrell went down. Can I make it out though? I missed my Q right there, that's pretty bad. Alright, we just have to back off because our allies are dead, so of course we cannot end the game at this point. But if we recall here, then we have enough for the Rabbit on Stealth Cap. The biggest power spike in the game, just gonna straight up one shot everyone. Auto recall here nearly should go for the drake, so we also play for the objectives. Even though we have a lead, you always want to make sure you get those drakes here, because um, you give those away for free for the enemy team, then they always have a chance to come back. I'm 
can just have can this press right here wait for somebody to fish take okay um so does have, have a stubble shadow so but to put him down i did not want to waste my ultimate on one guy right here because uh, i can save it for a dive and then hit multiple people we want to be able to end the game after one push so we just have to be patient a bit wait for the right moment onto that we just keep poking people So since Alistar's ultimate is down at this point, um, next fight he will also get one shot because he don't have anything defensive up. Alright, now you can go for the engage right here. I'm flashed away but Alistar's going down because he doesn't have his ultimate up so you can just go ahead and push. There we go, and we should be able to end the game at this point. And Jax is down as well, so this should be the game. And this was the canon guide, so of course I do hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask in the comments. As always, see you guys in the next video.